Good morning. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a CODAP document to use with your students. I'm going to go into CODAP and I'm going to create a new document. And in this new document, I'm going to put in a data set that I'm going to make up as a fictitious group within an intermediate school. I'm going to get some data from by downloading a sample from Census at School. I'm going to use a current year and I'm going to select year seven and year eight students. And I'm going to select some of the variables and I'm going to get a mixture of categorical and measurement or numerical variables so that we have a number of different things that we can explore with the students. And I might also look at screen time and the time came home from school and I'm going to get a sample of about 70 because that gives me enough to do something useful with and I need to download that sample and I'm going to give it a name I'm going to call it co Fano group so while it's a fictitious group I do need to have the group name I'm going to save that data. So you can see I've got my CSV sitting here in a download. So if I now go back to my Kodak document, I can click and drag and drop that CSV file into here. And you'll see this text box tells me a little bit about it. So I'm going to just close that because I don't need that for what I'm going to do with the students. And I'm going to change this from table view to case card view and just ensure that I've pulled this out fully. So I can see all of the variables that I've got available to me as I'm going to set up for the work that I'm going to do with my students. Before I go any further, I'm going to save this document. I'm going to save it to my Google Drive and I'm going to put it into my folder that I've been using and I'm going to call this co Fano Group Year 7 and 8. And save that there. Okay, so that's my document and now I want to set it up to share with my students and to try and so this is the sort of thing I could do. You can change what you put in the text boxes, what you put on the screen, but the easiest thing to do is to set up a text box. I would usually set it up with the PPDAC elements. I don't worry about data so much because the data is here on the side. But if I think about the other stages, problem, plan, analysis, and conclusion, and I put them into the text box. And to start with the problem, I would, for starters, put in my investigative question. So in this case, I might want to look at um, what, uh, what ways do students in Colfi Fano group travel to school. And then I would model for students initially my plan, which is that I'm going to graph the variable travel method to school. And I'll just widen this, this case here a little bit so we can see those a little bit better. Okay, so there we go. So that's set up, ready to go, modeling. And if for the analysis, I might write, um, write at least three statements about what you notice in your graph. So again, we're just structuring it in this early stages for the student. And then in the conclusion, I would write answer the investigative question. using evidence from your analysis. Okay, now I could leave it there and leave the rest up to the students depending on how much I've done with them in terms of showing them what to do. Or I could, if I wanted to, I could put a graph in 
ready for them to go. So this means that when the students come in, they've got the investigative question there ready to go. They've been told roughly what they need to graph. Well, not roughly, they've been told what they need to graph and they've been given some prompts about the analysis and the conclusion. And so I'm going to now get a share link to share this with students, but this act, this model, you can change it any way you want. You can uh, duplicate this one. So you go in and go make a copy. And then I get a copy comes up and I could simply now change the question to something like, what are the heights? of the students in the Kofaifano group and then change this to say graph the height, the variable height. And so on and I could save that and everything as I've shown you previously but for now I'm just going to go back to the original document and show you how to share. So to share with the students, you need to come down and click on share and get linked to a shared view. Enable sharing. Copy the link. And then you can drop that into whatever you use to share with your students. So whether you use Google Classroom or another form of sharing. Now just to show you what happens is when you give the students this link, when they click on it, it takes them to a copy of the original question. All right, so you'll see it's got investigative question, what ways do students in Kofi Whanau group travel to school? And there they go. And they can then work on that and save it to their own Google Drive. And you'll be able to go in and check it and depending on how your structure is set up. So just to recap, we start with a blank document, we put our data set in, we set up a text box where we give them the prompts, we can put a graph in or not, depending on how much scaffolding we want to give to the students. And then once we have done all of that, we need to remember to save and to share. Now, the thing is that if you do do changes to your documents, so say, for example, I move that graph around down to there, I would need to update the shared view. All right, and then close. So any changes I do to this document, I need to make sure I update the shared view before the students can access it. And that's it. So that's a nearly eight minutes of me sort of waffling around. But hopefully you can see that once you've set up a template, you could use this with many different data sets. And eventually you may even want to have this scaffolding in there for your students and encourage them to set up the document from scratch. Good luck.